The paths taken by these young people have not always been easy. Many have overcome adversity and prejudice, but they are driven by courage, compassion and commitment, qualities shared by my mother. Their stories remind us of the importance of organisations like the Diana Award. I thought he, um, he was very good. I thought the speech was brilliant. I thought there was a couple of very strong lines in it. Um, I think um, he said, um, I know that he was talking about his mother, Diana. He said, I know she would have been honoured to see a charity in her name doing such inspirational work to uplift young people from all corners of the globe. And he went on to say, he says, she taught me that everyone has a potential to give something back. Everyone in need deserves a supporting hand in life. And uh, he said that with great meaning. And of course, most of these recipients would have never have known Diana. I mean, Diana has been dead now 27 years or she will be this year. And, um, and most of these people were some about that age, maybe just a bit younger, but they'd all done amazing things in full parts of the world, Nigeria, Sri Lanka, India, Canada, and uh, one lady from, from the UK. And, uh, and it was um, amazing that this, this, this charity, this Diana legacy has helped over 50,000 youngsters. And, uh, and he was just, he's so proud of it. He was very smartly dressed in his dinner jacket and, uh, and he, um, he he just he was brilliant. Posed up with all the groups afterwards. It was a it was a very inspirational evening, and and I was so glad I went. I mean, it was tiring. I mean, it was at the science museum, and uh, he was uh, he just uh, gave it everything. And and you could see he was talking about his mother with great affection. Now I remember Diana very well because I covered her for seventeen years, and. Um, I mean, I just went everywhere in the world with her and I see her from a shy 19-year-old uh, nursery assistant to become the Princess of Wales, to be the, become the most famous woman in the world, to probably make such a difference to the way the royal family worked when she, uh, she was in many ways her own person. She did it her way. And, and as he said, she would have been very proud to see what these young people have achieved and and it was all about that and she taught the children that and she taught William and Harry that as as youngsters and she reminded them of their great privilege you know she once took them to a, a down and out shelter and saw how people had to survive with no homes and um and, it, and it's just concentrated their mind and you know I've always said that although uh Prince Charles or the King Charles uh taught them, uh, encouraged them to, to read Shakespeare and go to the opera. Diana was the one that took them to McDonald's and to the pictures and also to the down and out shelters. And that's, that, that gave them a pretty grounded in life. So in many ways, uh, watching, the, watching the awards last night, I was thinking a lot about Diana. I was thinking about those great years with her, the quips, the way she would, she would banter with you. You know, I remember once saying to her, she had a very short haircut, and I said, you know, if you uh, get it cut much short, you'll look like Sinead O'Connor. And she said, I mean, at least I've got hair, Arthur. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, it was it was, um, it was was a lot, a lot of good memories thinking back to those days. And, of course, remembering William. I remember William with, with, with his mother. I remember when they started school. I remember all those times when he was at Eton, all these really amazing... Um, watching William grow up. It was actually there when his mother brought him out in his arms and that was 40 years ago. So uh, it's, um, it was been a, it was, it was very memorable for me as well. So, and these young people, they were so inspired, you know, they were, and some of the women with beautiful dresses and traveled thousands of miles to be there. It was just a great event. Um, um, and um, I'm sure they'll never forget it for the rest of their lives. The day they came to London, and got their gift from the Prince of Wales. So much, so much of the future depends on you guys, right? You, you, and you know that. And some of you may feel as though the work that you're doing is small. Some may be feel as though it's big. Wherever it goes, whatever it does, you the impact again that you are having on hundreds, thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of people. Like without you guys doing that, and without you inspiring other young people to do the same thing because it feels good because it's the right thing to do, but you also, you get so much from it. 
that inspiration is like this ripple effect that goes goes it goes across the world. I was expecting the Harry uh, tape to be played after uh, William left, but not twelve o'clock at night, which was. Obviously, William didn't want anything to do with Harry there. William was going there to present the awards uh, and uh, he didn't want Harry interfering. And um, he just, he he left, he got there, at, I think he got there about quarter to seven and he left at quarter past eight. So, uh, but Harry, I haven't heard what Harry said. I mean, it's, um, he uh, he very cares about, the, obviously he cares about the Diana legacy and he would be very interested in it. And I remember, I think last year, there was a lovely picture of Harry with some of the, Winners, so uh, it was. Um, yeah, it's a shame these two brothers can't uh, bury the hatchet, you know. Because quite honestly, I can remember them growing up together. They were like inseparable. They did everything together. They had the most fantastic tree house at Highgrove. I mean, some oh, it was a magnificent place. They had the electric cars. They had army kits. They 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 played for tireless if they had uh, a trampoline. I mean, it was just. They were always together. They, um, I remember, and they used to sort of laugh about each other. You know, they would take the mickey out of each other. I remember once William telling me, Harry, stop, stop moaning. We'd just gone to Sandhurst. He not stop moaning about how his feet ate from all the marching, you know. So that's how they, and he said, when he takes his shoes and so I'll put them socks back on, Harry, you know. And so they were fun together. Now they don't even look at each other. And they don't even want to be in the same room as each other. Well, certainly William doesn't anyway. It's such a shame, really, because, you know, that schism, it, somebody's got to do something about it. And I hope probably they come to their senses one day and realise this is stupid. You know, this, these are, you know, they've, they've, they've suffered an awful lot when they were young, when their mother died. I mean, what agony that must have been. And they just, they just clung on to each other then. And now they just don't want anything to do with each other, which is... Absolutely a shame, absolutely a shame. But that's life, you know, and that's families for you. But, um, you know, he was, uh, William was inspired last night. He could, when he was speaking about his mother, he said, my mother always taught me to do that. You know, he said that in one of his, one of his phrases. My mother always taught me to do that. So obviously it was, uh, you know, it, it was, uh, I don't know, I think I have it every two years, but it was absolutely brilliant. I can't tell you. Well, I think I don't really take much notice of what she does anymore. I think she's um, uh, she's been the cause of a lot of this. You know, I mean, uh, it's no secret that, you know, she was never talking to her family. It was only one member of her family at her wedding. And now uh, Harry's not talking to his family, you know, and it's just only one common denominator there, and that's Meghan. Uh, sadly, uh, I wish they would, this would end. I wish that they could get together. I think they wish they could hug each other again, but it just doesn't seem possible. And, and her launching her own programme, I mean, she's got to do something, I suppose, got to keep the money rolling in and she's got to, I mean, she's got to monetize her popularity now. I don't think it's going to last forever, personally. I think that um, it will wane. I think that, um, but you know, Harry was such a such a star here when he was in the member of the royal family. He was a joy to work with. I can't tell you, he was just a fantastic person to work with. And I thought at one stage he was the most, as far as some readers were concerned, he was the most popular member. He was, he couldn't do no wrong. He was just, and if, if ever he did wrong, we forgave him immediately because he was, um, he was a full on, hundred percent committed to supporting the royal family. And sadly, that no, it's no longer the case. Well, you know, I think um, well, she's apologised for that. And uh, I think, I mean, that was a mistake. But, you know, we learn by our mistakes, David, as we do all going through life. And uh, I think that she uh, would uh, wish she could undone it, but she's, it's done and it's, and it's out there and and it's a mistake. And I think people now realise that and, and I think we should move on from it. Uh, and as a realness, I just hope she gets better quickly, as I do hope. Our, our king gets gets better quickly. I mean, he is uh, he's just uh, working as hard as he can, but he's um, you know he's suffering. He's he's having his treatment, and hopefully it works. And Catherine seems to be on the mend. And one of the great things about that picture that she did issue was that she looked so well in it. And 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 when you looked at that picture, 
all I saw was was four smiling faces, all looking incredibly happy. I wasn't friends examining the, the, the cuff of the daughter's sleeve or uh, the zip on the on the princess's jacket. It was just um, it was just a, a beautiful picture, and um, it's sad that it was spoilt by being over photoshopped or badly photoshopped or sloppy photos photoshopping. But there you go. It's happened, and it's. Uh, and it'll be remembered forever as always, but um, hopefully the next picture uh, will be completely pure and, and, and honest and nothing, nothing done to it except maybe encourage the child to give us a big smile.